Hi everyone, before we get started today, I have to take a moment for some shameless self-promotion. A while ago, we did an appearance at a gun show. They invited us to come back, so we're going to. So, on March 11th and 12th, 2023, the crew and I will be at the Rick Rial Gun Show that's held at the Polk County Fairgrounds in Polk County, Oregon. We'll have a couple of tables, we'll have guns on display, we'll have some t-shirts. We may tell some very boring anecdotes that aren't fit to be told in this format. Come on out and say hi, it should be fun. Okay, let's get to today's presentation. Hi, we're out on our range today, and we're talking about the power and effectiveness of the Colt Walker cap and ball revolver, or at least this Uberti replica. Now, power and effectiveness are relative, so we'll shoot this side by side with the Ruger Old Army cap and ball revolver and see how they compare. Now, this comes with a few caveats. One, we already have presentations on the basics of black powder on loading and firing cap and ball revolvers. We have one on cap and ball revolvers for concealed carry personal protection home defense. So we don't have to rehash all of that today. We're only talking about the relative power and effectiveness of these two revolvers. Secondly, when it comes to shooting any firearm, there's lots of different ways of doing things and lots of different people have lots of different opinions. But when it comes to specifically black powder firearms, there's lots and lots of different ways of doing things, and lots and lots and lots and lots of people have a plethora of opinions on how to do it. And as far as I can tell, the only thing on which everyone agrees is that I'm doing it wrong. Which leads me to point three. I've been around black powder firearms my whole life. I've used them for hunting birds, rabbits, deer, buffalo. I was at one time the president of a black powder club. I've been to dozens of mountain man rendezvous, and most of the time, I'll take first place in rifle shooting, or first place in pistol shooting, or both. I have a modicum of competence when it comes to shooting black powder firearms. So point four, if you'll just consider the possibility that just maybe you don't know everything, and consider the possibility that just maybe I have a modicum of competence in this subject, you really will get more out of today's presentation. Now, point five doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about today, but I know lots of people will ask, so I'm going to mention it. The propellant that I'm going to be using today is black powder, and when I do that, Lots and lots of people will ask about black powder substitutes, so I'll spend a few minutes discussing that topic at the end of today's presentation. So with that, let's get started. Now let's discuss accuracy, and the first thing I have to say is that it would be completely unfair and unrealistic to compare the accuracy of these two revolvers. The Ruger has big, square, high visibility, fully adjustable sights. By comparison, the Walker has much smaller sights, there's very little you can do to adjust them, and the rear sight is a notch in the hammer. Let me show you a close-up of it. And you can see that this is your rear sight. A comparison of accuracy would also be unfair because I've owned this Ruger Old Army revolver since before anyone ever heard of calling it Episode 4. While by contrast, although I've had this Walker revolver for a few months, I have never fired it. A few minutes ago was the first time I've ever loaded it. So comparing the accuracy of the two wouldn't tell us much. However, let's see what kind of accuracy I can achieve with this. I'll shoot this target from a distance of about 20 yards, my aiming point being the center of the target. Let's see what I can do.
and here's our group. Now this is the first shot, and remember my aiming point is in the center, but when I saw how high it hit, I adjusted my aiming point and then shot these shots. So this is not the flyer that it appears to be. But what we really see here is that I'm hitting quite a bit high and a little bit to the right, and I only have limited things I can do about that. However, that's a pretty good group. Now let's get to the point and compare the power of these two revolvers. I have the chronograph set up at seven yards and I'm going to start with the Ruger Old Army, which has a seven and a half inch barrel. It's loaded with a 457 round ball, which is about 143 grains, backed up by 30 grains of 3F black powder. This revolver is rated for a max of 40 grains, but as far as I can tell, most cap and ball revolvers in the 1800s that are this caliber would have been loaded with 30 grains, so that's what I'm gonna use. So let's see what kind of velocities I get. Eight seventy-one. Nine Seven sixty-five. Eight fifty-three. Eight thirty-two. And eight twenty-seven. Let's see how that compares to the Walker revolver. Now I have the Walker revolver. It has a nine-inch barrel. It's loaded with the same 457 diameter, 143 grain round balls, but these are backed up by 5050 grains of 3F black powder. You may have read that these revolvers are rated for 60 grains. I'm gonna err on the side of caution and only use 50. Let's see what kind of velocities we get with this. 1161 1126 1111 You see how I'm pushing up that ramrod different models will have a catch this one doesn't Eleven thirty-eight. Eleven forty-eight. And eleven oh two. Let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and it comes with the normal caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. And the results I got were, with the old army, a mean velocity of 842 feet per second. With the walker, a mean of 1,131. That's 289 feet per second more. That's a lot more. Even if you take the highest reading I got with the old army compared to the lowest reading I got with the walker, it's still had by 202 feet per second. So. 842 versus 1131, the walker is a lot more powerful. But as I've said so many times, these are just numbers. How will those numbers translate into effectiveness on the intended target? Let's put that to the test. To test the effectiveness of our ammunition, we're going to use something called the meat target. For those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather couch skin followed by pork steak pectorals, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of lab coat on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I have the Ruger Old Army with its seven and a half inch barrel loaded with the 457 round balls and 30 grains of 3F black powder, and I'll shoot the meat target from seven yards, and let's see what kind of results I get.
Well, we've got the meat target taken apart, and we see pretty good damage to the ribs on the front of the target, where projectiles hit ribs, shattered them. We also see some really good damage to our orange lung tissue, and our ribs on the back of the target, where projectiles hit ribs, broke them. And all of the projectiles were stopped by the garment on the back of the target. Let's take a close-up look at the projectiles. I only recovered three projectiles because one rolled off the table into the snow, but you can see there they are and not a great deal of deformation. Now I have a new meat target set up and I have the Walker revolver with its 9 inch barrel loaded with the same 457 round ball backed up by 50 grains of 3F black powder. I'll shoot this from 7 yards and let's see what kind of damage I can do. I have the meat target taken apart, and as far as damage to the ribs on the front of the target, I'm going to say that looks like significantly more. Damage to our orange lung tissue, in my subjective view, I'm going to say more. Not drastically more, but more damage. And as far as the damage to the ribs on the back of the target, again, we have holes through them. But as where before, where projectiles hit ribs, I said they broke the rib. In this case, I'm going to upgrade to saying where a projectile hit a rib, shattered it. And as far as penetration with the old army, all of the projectiles were stopped by the garment on the back of the target. With the Walker revolver, all of the projectiles made it through to anywhere from the second to the seventh layer of fleece. Now let's take a close-up look at the projectiles. And here's our projectiles, and you can see that with the Walker revolver, the projectiles flattened out just a little bit more. Now one more thing to add. Please remember that we were not comparing the design of the Ruger Old Army to the design of the Uberti replica of the Colt Walker revolver. We were only comparing their relative power and effectiveness. And when it comes to that comparison, we saw that the Walker was a lot more powerful. In terms of effectiveness, based on our very rudimentary demonstration, it looks like the Walker was significantly more effective. Now, was it enough more effective to make the difference? Again, based on our rudimentary demonstration, I'm going to say, depending on what it is you're trying to shoot, Yes, it is that much more powerful. So that concludes today's presentation. But remember at the beginning I said that at the end we'd have a discussion about black powder substitutes? Well, here we are. Now, in talking about this, I have to point out that I have never personally used a black powder substitute. However, I have on quite a few occasions seen other people use such things. So. My knowledge of such things is not a great amount, and none firsthand. I can only tell you what I've observed on a few occasions, so keep that in mind. And with that, I can tell you three things. One, when you take your black powder measure and you fill it with a certain amount of black powder, you're going to get a certain amount of power. If you have the same measure set to the same amount and you fill it with the same volume of black powder substitute, you will typically have a less powerful shot. The second thing I would tell you is that most black powder substitutes are more stable than real black powder. They're more resistant to flame and spark. Thus, what I've seen happen is you have more misfires. Your percussion cap goes off, but it doesn't ignite your propellant. I've seen that happen a lot more with black powder substitutes than with real black powder. Now, the third thing that I have to say is just completely my perception, my opinion. But it goes like this. When I shoot muzzle-loading firearms, I use real black powder, and I want that shot to go off, and I want that projectile to go downrange powerfully and effectively. But in addition to that, I want the things that go with black powder shooting. Big white puff of smoke, that horrible rotten egg smell, the caustic residue that it leaves behind. Some people don't really want that, or at least it's not as important to them. To me, it's all part of going to the mountain man rendezvous or doing black powder hunting. Other people don't care about such things, so they'll use a black powder substitute. And there's many on the market. Probably Pyrodex is the most popular, but there's some others like Polydent or Polygrip, and Metamucil, and whatever other names I don't remember. 
but there's a few on the market and people will use those because they don't want the caustic residue, they don't want the horrible smell. And so to them it has an advantage. Sometimes the advantage is only that's what's available to them. But for me, because I want all of those things that go with black powder, I'm not going to use a black powder substitute. And I compare the whole thing of using black powder substitute to dating an inflatable girlfriend. Now, in some ways, it might be better than a real girlfriend. For example, an inflatable girlfriend wouldn't make me come over to her house and then wait for an hour for her to get ready to go. An inflatable girlfriend wouldn't start any trip, whether it's across town or across the state, with the statement, can we stop for a coffee? And then promptly spill the coffee in my car. An inflatable girlfriend wouldn't have a yappy little dog that mines my carpet with poodle bombs. An inflatable girlfriend wouldn't call me 40 times a day on my cell phone. No, I wouldn't say that she had caustic residue, but perhaps toxic ambiance. But to get back on point, so in many ways, inflatable girlfriend could be better than real, but to me, it's not real. And that's the main reason why I would never use a black powder substitute, and I stick with real black powder. Again, just my opinion on the whole thing. So, as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Ruger Old Army versus the Uberti replica of a Colt Walker revolver video.